this is very important. Because this means you're not living through your volition, but you're living through Christ's volition. In Galatians 2.23, I have been crucified with Christ. In Him, I have shared, amen, His crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ the Messiah lives in me. What does this mean? To live, meaning this. I am making all my decisions where to go and how I'm going to go and where I'm going to go. Who is living there? Me. Mm -hmm. The soul lives. Because the soul has what? Sovereignty. What? Freedom of what? Choice or freedom of desire. If there's no longer the I that live, what Christ lives, meaning it's no longer the I who makes the what? Decisions. Mm -hmm. It's not my volition anymore. Meaning I am constantly then looking for what? The will of God. This is why Paul said, make sure you know the will of God. Not foolishly, not vaguely. But you absolutely understand, you understand, what God is saying. Meaning, don't live by your decision, but what God has decided. Mm -hmm. The only way you can do that, you have to watch a lot at what? God. <laughs> if my brother here is running a job site and I'm following him, and I, say, I, I promise him I'm going to say amen. Amen. Yes and Amen. I have to pay close attention to see where he's what? Going. Because I don't get to decide where I'm what? Going. So when you, when you baptize into Christ and you say, I have died with Christ, what you say, I have died to the decision making and where my life is going to be directed, go. This is what I'm saying. When you are a child, you just decide, I'm going here, I'm going here. But when you become a man, you are not going to be able to. Someone is going to dress you and take you to places. So when you are crucified with Christ, meaning it's the end of your decision making. Your only decision is what? I'm amen. Yes, I'm in agreement with God. Does this make sense? So this is a part you have to, this is another place the enemy will tempt you much. Part of losing your tendency to sin, if you die truly with Christ, you won't be sinning left, right, or center. Okay? You're not going to be making a decision. Christ is going to be making a decision. Mm. What keeps the sinning up, you are still making the decision. Do you understand? The Bible says when a man die, he is die to his tie, his connection to what? Sin. You see? So, one of the things you need to pray is say, Lord, actualize for me, make it a reality for me, what it is to be die with you, so I no longer make decision, but you are making a decision. Because the life I'm living, you understand? It's you, through me. Does this make sense? Amen. You see? If I have, not nice, I, I can see with my eyes and I'm going here and I'm going there. And let's say I lose my eyes and seeming going to be the one guiding me now. The life now I live is where seeming sees. He takes me. This is part of the crucifixion. Amen. I have been crucified with Christ. In him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ the Messiah lives in me. It is no longer I who makes decisions. But it's Christ who makes the decision. I think I've shared this with you. If it was me making a decision, I won't be preaching here in front of you. Probably on a beach somewhere. <laughs> Did you see on the beach? Probably. Not where you like beach. Yeah, I'd be on the next one. <laughs> um, I probably would be somewhere. But it's not I who live. The Lord is no, like Peter. You know what I'm saying? Feed my sheep. Mm. Tend my flock. Heal my people. Give life to my people. Life to you. Yes. Give my people the truth. And there's a different will that my will comes under to, succumb to. There's a different will that every time I see it in my spirit, it makes me go what? Yes and amen. It allows me to have great peace too. Because I don't have to come up with my own will, I don't need to think a lot. I, I, there's something I have to do a lot. I have to what? Watch a lot. Because I have to always wait for what? The instruction. And I always have to be dressed and ready as Paul said to give a spiritual or, or a priestly service. I have to always be in position to say what? I agree. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen? And then I have to get delivered daily. Because ever so often he showed me something. I like Ananias. I go, Lord, I don't want to do this. He go, didn't you die with me? How come you have an opinion? <laughs> you understand? I got to put it back on the cross. You are crucified. You're not allowed to have your opinion in it. The two words you are supposed to know very well is yes and 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because God will decree this will, and I can hear him on the cross. I oppose. I oppose. I didn't know God. I didn't know I was acting for your opinion. Amen. So the thing you're going to learn in this process is yes and amen. Because in your baptism, you are crucified with Christ to make in your own decision. Living the way you used to live. Thinking and doing the things and deciding where and how you want to go. This is the baptism. You see, many people just get fire, fire, fire insurance. They heard Christ is coming and they're going to die, so they come in. But when you come in, Christ wants you to stop living the way you're living in a perpetual state of sin and death. He wants you to live in what? Life to life, strength to strength, glory to glory, victory to victory. There's only one way that can be done. That's John 5, 19 and 20, John 5, 30. He has to lead. You have to follow. Yeah. Notice Christ and his disciples, come with me. And notice the one he left behind. You go, come with me, and they, they'll use their own volition. They go, let me go bury my dead. You got any man who, who I've called and looked back is now worthy of what? Come with me. You got, I want yes, and I want amen. Because I'm going to give you a life far beyond anything you have ever lived. Does it make sense? Do you understand what it is to be crucified with Christ? It means the end of your volition. And the Amen. The support or the embracing of God's volition. Jesus said, not my will. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith. I'll say, I live by trusting in someone else's will. Mm -hmm. God, go, when, you, when you come into Christ, you go, the life you're going to live now in the body, it ain't going to be you doing it anymore. It's going to be done by you trusting where I am taking you. Do you understand it? So it, it's kind of like this come past the chart. You see? As I said, when I had eyes, I can decide I'm going to move here, I'm going to move here. When you die with true baptism, the life now I live is where he's going to take me. So wheresoever he live, by faith and trust in, he is not going to hurt me, and where he take me, this is where I go. Every place, complete faith, you just let it go. This is how it has to be. This is how it has to be. You understand? Yeah. You stop thinking ceaselessly. Perfect. Sheep in the shepherd. How you gonna figure it out? Yeah. It's funny. I, I was thinking about something. I needed to get done, pertaining to the church, etc. And the Lord reminded me, "How is life you live in, son? Yeah. You go, isn't it my issues to stick? Because I'm coming off the cross. I want to use what my life. He goes, no. The life you live, it's by trust in me." You see, you have two work, two things you're supposed to do. Be very sensitive to where I am moving. And always be ready to say yes and amen. 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 It takes time, trust me. When you live for years making your own decision, when all of a sudden someone else takes the decision, I don't know about other people. That's not wasn't easy for me. It got better because I, part of what wisdom showed me is the utter destruction of my own decisions. So I was afraid to make them do. But it took time to learn to what? The life I live is by faith in God. You know why Israel had such a tough time? Israel was living in Egypt. Their own life was hell. They promised to God they'll follow him. What, what was the problem they had? The life they were supposed to live by faith. They couldn't what? Do it. So a 10 day journey took what? 40 years. They simply couldn't live by faith. Living by faith. We can live by faith when God leads us into what? The things we like. Where we have trouble trusting God is when he takes us into things we don't like. And in, those wor in this world, those are what? Many. <laughs> the life is by faith. Now look how you live it. So the Bible says, I now live in the body. Amen. I live by faith, by trust. But now listen to it. Look how you do it. By adherence to and reliance and complete trust in the Son of God. You have to completely move away from your decision making. 
and completely rely depends adhere. Adhere means what? You know what the word means? Stick it. It means stick. We have this technique, when I did martial arts, we have a technique called um, sticking. And what it is, once you touch the person, you follow them, no matter where they go. It means it never separated. So he said, the way to live is to stay, stick to me. Let me take you. I'll teach you a secret. You know how you know you're not living by, by, by faith or trust? Yes. I'm gonna, so I'm going to blow up some mountain in some of your mind right now. You have a whole lot of thoughts going on. You can never be living by faith and your and your what? Because you shouldn't have to, to think about it. Somebody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. Your thinking should basically works this way. Hey, how come I can't sense where God is? This is when you have to think. Mm -hmm. Because you can't what? Sense how to stick. Mm -hmm. But if you're sticking, if, if, if my brother is leading me, if Brother Revenue is leading me, what is it I have to think about? Where he's leading me, maybe? Trust. What he's seeing? I can't see, first of all. Do you understand? If I trust him, I don't have to think. I just enjoy he taking me. Sometimes when I'm going, I look, can I ask where I am? This, this place feels hard. But it's as much. I can be curious. Thinking is this. It's distrust. I wonder if he's leading me right. Maybe is this going to happen. Maybe I should be leading. Maybe this is. And you can't rest in peace anymore because you are busy distrusting the lead. The Bible said Christ was filled and led. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many of us can't be filled because we, you understand? We don't trust. Mm -hmm. we have a we, yes, we have something in us going, I should be leading. I know what I'm doing. After all, my volition is good. After all, I can calculate many things, you know. I didn't make the world, but I could do probably a better job than God. I couldn't save myself, but maybe I could. Mm -hmm. And you can't rest in the peace of the Lord. Because you're lacking what? Trust. Mm -hmm. This is why the Bible said faith and fear. You know what I'm saying? Trust and distrust can't stay in the same place. Mm -hmm. You're doing one or the other at all times. Mm -hmm. If you are distrusted or being, you understand? Know you can't have faith. Both can't happen. You either completely trust him in where sir he's gonna take you or how, or you're completely what? Distrusted. Mm -hmm. You see? The life you have to real life, you need to understand a couple of things. When I'm crucified, it means my days for me making decision through my volition is over. Mm -hmm. The only decision I have is to say yes to God always. And believe me, that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Because God seems to come sometime in the most, I love what Larry Randolph said, so he go, he catches me sometime in my unreligious moment. <laughs> he said, my religious moment is when I'm preparing for him. Mm -hmm. I am planning when he's coming. I'm going to say, yes, Lord, what do you want? My unreligious moment needed, I'm not guarded. I'm in my natural self, and he goes, let's go. What do you want? Mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't religious there. Meaning, I didn't get to act. Mm -hmm. most, what most people do is an act. Mm -hmm. It's like a movie script. Mm -hmm. They're planning what they're going to say. No, no, God doesn't come then. Yeah. He, he wants it. In essence, what he wants to show you is who is in charge, that you're still in charge of yourself. So he comes when you're not what? Prepared. Mm -hmm. You're tired, and he comes and he goes, let's go see Brother Cordy. I'm tired. Oh, it's you, Lord. I am sorry. <laughs> you know, you go, why did you catch you in one of your religious moments? <laughs> when you can be prepared for me to pretend? Your religious moment always is pretend. This is why you had issues with the Pharisees and them. You got, you're a bunch of pretenders. Whitewashed too. You're not natural. Amen? You have to understand that. You can't make the, the decision. The only decision you make, I'm going to watch God and I want to say yes to God. And that you, you can't do it in your home. Jesus has to do that for you. But you have to be what? Willing. Amen. You have to be willing. It took me a long time when God used to wake me up at a different time, get up and pray, Lord, I'm tired. He go, whose life are you living? Are you living for you or your tired body? Mm -hmm. After a while, I pray, Lord, help me that every time you call on me, I can say yes. Mm -hmm. Help me to always be ready to respond to you. Help me to stop making decisions for myself so you will make the decision that I died you understand? To live now through you. And I will always say yes and amen. And help you to always be able to respond to the yes and amen. Meaning do it. This takes a long time. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. We have a song back home. There's a simple life to live. It's not that simple. Enough. Trust and obey. First. For there is no other way. To be, happy. to be happy with Jesus. You just trust and obey. Mm -hmm. You have to trust him and obey. It's the only way. 
But it takes time. It takes time. It takes time. You wait for his decision all the time. And if it's one thing from my experience and those I've seen who follow, trust me, God's speed, sometimes you wonder if he's trying to kill you. And somebody goes, can't we take a rest? I see that we gotta go here, we gotta go. He moves you. We got to look you got to catch up to do. Amen? So the scripture said to complete adherence to and reliance and complete trust in the Son of God who loves me and give himself up for you. Christ go, don't you think you should trust me? I give myself up for you and I love you. Because the problem we have with trust is that we, we can't comprehend he give up his own life and his, his, his sovereignty for us. Amen? And how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? One of the reasons that allows us to surrender to people is when we realize how much they love us. This is one of the reasons he likes to develop a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Typically, before he starts leading you here and there, the first thing he needs to teach you is what? How much he loves you. Amen. How much he's done for you. Yes. Because at a certain point, that should hold things together when he tries to what? Mm -hmm. Lead you. Perfect. Yes. It is one of the reasons he's going to give you the spirit of wisdom so you can discern who he is, how much he loves you, and how much he has done for you. Amen? Amen. The reason for all of that, though, is just so how much he wants to lead you into life. Amen. And trust me, then. The more you trust Him, the more peace you'll have. Because the less you will stress yourself out. The level of your stress and fatigue deals with your distrust. Because I mean the more you have to take into your own hand. There's a time when in order to know what God is doing, I have to focus all the time. Then a time I can kind of focus somewhat and kind of listen to see Him. But from the time you move, I'm like, I gotta go. I now change my focus. But it takes time. But well, you've got to get accustomed to the spirit, your spirit, and God's spirit, and how he communicates to you. Yes. Does this make sense? Yes. So you have to stay in the spirit all the time. You need to pray and ask God, Lord, how do I keep watching? Because you are the one going to make the decision, and I live by complete trust, the life I live. You understand? True Christ who will love me, and to trust. Your mind, got, the enemy is going to give you trouble if you don't understand how much Christ loves you. And I must Christ give himself up for you. Yes. So you got to Lord, help me to live in complete trust. Because I know you give yourself up for me and you love me. It has to become real for you. Nobody else can do it for you. If you know for yourself how much he loves you and how much he trusts you, you will, and how much he um, give himself up for you, you will learn to trust him. Mm -hmm. If not, you will not stop thinking. Mm -hmm. You will not stop making decisions. <clears throat> and you'll never live the life of Christ. You're saved, you're a son or daughter, but you want to experience God best. Do you understand?